all praises due to Allah and His peace and blessing be upon His last messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his pure family, his loyal companions and all those who follow them with righteousness and good deeds until the day of judgment. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Now, uh, interestingly, in the Holy Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided us to take care of our relatives. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam emphasized this even more in many places and many hadith and many incidents. Out of them, there are some group among the relatives that are sometimes ignored or we do not appreciate their status neither in society nor in Islam as well. Today we'll speak about the sister and the status of a sister in Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Holy Quran in the story of Musa alayhi salam the action and the contribution of his sister to his own life and his own well-being when he was a child. Now after his mother put him into the river, she sent his sister to go and search for him. She went, she risked her life and her safety and her freedom going all the way till she reached the palace of the tyrant Pharaoh. And there, subhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not allow him to take any breast of any woman. So he could not be breastfed. And when she noticed this, she says that I know of a woman who can take care of her and she is well known. Most likely he will accept her breast. He will accept her milk. She meant her mother, but she would not tell him that she is his sister or that is the mother. And she actually persuaded them and they were convinced and they sent him with her so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed her action and she was able to bring back Musa alayhi salam to his mother interestingly Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminded Musa alayhi salam after he became a messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of this favor of his sister upon him that how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent your sister to rescue Furthermore, we have the action of the messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is probably a not well known fact that the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had a sister in fostering. The sister of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, one of them, the famous one is Ash-Shayma bint al-Harith radiallahu anha wa arda. She was his sister by breastfeeding, by fostering. Now, she was among the people after the Battle of Horizon that were brought to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he recognized her. When he recognized her, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's ear were watery, came with tear. And the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam took his garment and placed it on the ground for her and made her sit on it. She was still not a believer at that time. And the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam honored her. And the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave her a choice. If you would like to stay with me and you will live with me, honored and beloved. Or if you would like, I will send you back to your own tribe and your own family. And I will, I will bring you there to them. I will drop you there. So she decided to go back. And the Messenger وسلم, gave her some camels and gave her some sheep and gave her lots of money. And the Messenger وسلم, dropped her back there. She actually became a Muslim and she had played a vital role. The first one in this incident, Ashayma radiallahu anha wa ardaha, was the reason for the relief of all the prisoners from Bani Sa'id, from her tribe. And the Messenger وسلم, set them free. And they went. And furthermore, after the death of the Messenger وسلم, some of the tribes of Arabia rejected Islam. And among them were some people from Bani Sa'id, from her own tribe. And she played a vital role in establishing their Iman and strengthening their Iman and keeping them as Muslims. 
Here we take a glimpse from the action of the Messenger وسلم, of honoring and respecting and good treatment to his sister by fostering, although she was not a Muslim at that time. How are we treating our sisters now? How are Muslims, mashallah? Part of the direct family, direct bloodline, not by fostering. Furthermore, the Messenger وسلم, guided us to some of the rights of sisters. Some of them are obligatory rights. And some of them are recommended rights. The first one is about the obligation, taking care of them and spending upon them and fulfilling their expenses. This is an obligation on the father if he's alive, or else it will be on the brother. The Messenger وسلم, guided us. And he said, the hand that gives is the one that is high in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not the hand that takes. Share with others whatever you have. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will love you more. The hand that gives is the higher one. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Start with your mother. Then your father. Then your sister. Then your brother. Then those who are closer and closer. Here we notice the Messenger وسلم, gave priority to the sister over the brother in expenses and in payment. Again, a common mistake. Huh? Usually, people neglect their sisters. And this is again is the direction of the Messenger وسلم, and again is the sunnah of the Messenger. Because usually the sister is the weaker part. So you should take care of the weaker more. The brother can earn usually and can work. In all cases, do not neglect your brother, but start with the sister. Furthermore, there is another right that is obligatory, which is after your death, part of the inheritance. This part of the inheritance, Jabir bin Abdullah radiallahu anhu wa he had nine sisters after the death of his father, Abdullah radiallahu anhu. After he was murdered, Jabir did two things. The first one we'll speak about is the inheritance. At his death, he used to lose conscious. He said the Messenger وسلم, visited him with Abu Bakr and Umar and he was unconscious at that time. The Messenger وسلم, performed wudu, then took some of that water of wudu and washed his face with it. And he came back to consciousness. He regained his conscious. So he asked the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, O Messenger of Allah, what shall I do with my money after my death? He does not have any direct family members now, except the sisters. And the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not answer him until Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala revealed the last verse of Surah An-Nisa. They ask you for fatwa regarding this. Say Allah Almighty gives you fatwa in Al-Kalala. Kalala means when a person dies and he does not have any uh, origins that is father or mother and he does not have any offspring no children Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you the ruling regarding that if a person dies and he leaves behind only one daughter then she takes half of his remains the inheritance and he inherits her if he is the one that he's alive if she dies and in case they were two sisters they will share two-thirds of the inheritance and if they were more the male, the brother, will take double that of a sister. This was the ruling that was given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the death of Jabir bin Abdullah radiallahu anhu. He said, this verse was revealed in me. The right of inheritance of a sister in Islam. And sadly, in our times, we see many questions sometimes of some people, some brothers, who are supposed to be the protector, the guardians, the caretaker of their sisters, denying them their share in the inheritance, or taking part of it, or not giving them their full share, or make them sign some paper to relieve them of some of their rights, etc. All of this is a kind of injustice. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will hold you accountable to that. You are not allowed to take one single dirham of their rights. We are speaking about honoring them and giving them more and more, taking care of them and giving them preference. And sadly, some Muslims are taking some of their rights. <coughs> SubhanAllah. Now, interestingly, Jabir bin Abdullah did something else, which is a recommendation, but not an obligatory thing. After the death of his father, he was left with nine 
sisters. He was the only caretaker of them. And he was unmarried at that time. And you know how difficult it is to take care of daughters without a, a woman or a female. Especially when they grow on, when they, when they become adults and so on. So Jabir bin Abdullah married a widow. An old woman that was a widow. So the Messenger of Allah, when he asked him about his marriage, have you married? He said, yes. He said, who? He said, I married a widow. The Messenger of Allah told him, why didn't you marry a young virgin girl? So that you will play with her and she will play with you. You will enjoy life together. Jabir bin Abdullah gave the excuse and he said, Oh, Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, my father after his death left me with nine sisters. And I didn't want to bring another one with them. I wanted to bring an older woman to take care of them, to take care of their affairs and to educate them. So he gave preference to the well-being and the future of his sisters rather than his own desires. <laughs> now usually when this story is mentioned, you only hear about the first part. Why didn't you marry a virgin or a girl? That's it. They don't tell you about the end of the hadith. It's true. But the end of the hadith, the Messenger وسلم, said, فَبَارَكَ لك. Then may Allah Almighty bless you. And bless you with this marriage. This is very important. What he did was something that is actually a very good thing. Because he gave preference to the well-being and the future of his sisters. Something else that is also part of the rights of the sister, this is not an obligatory thing, this is also a recommended thing. Which is to take care of their financial needs or financial obligation, if you are able to. If she has a debt, outstanding rights to other people, etc., and you are able to relieve her from that, you should do so. Ibn Abbas عنهما, related that a man came asking the Messenger وسلم, He said, my sister vowed, took an oath to perform Hajj, but she died before performing Hajj. Shall I perform Hajj on her behalf? It's not obligatory upon him. She made the oath, right? So how do you? The Messenger وسلم, to asked him, if she had any outstanding debt, would you have paid it off? He said, yes. The Messenger وسلم, told him, then the debt of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has priority to be paid. Perform Hajj on her behalf. And he did. Another thing that is also important about care, taking care of the daughters is their education and their will bringing up. This is one of the rights upon the guardian. And the Messenger وسلم, said in the beautiful hadith, anyone who has two daughters or three, or two sisters or three. Daughters or sisters. Anyone who has two daughters or three, or two sisters and three or three, and he took good care of them, and he educated them, and he brought them up well, until they leave him, until they leave, either by marriage or by death, or until he died, whichever comes first. Now what is the reward for this person? The Messenger وسلم, said, He and I will be this close in paradise. <laughs> in this hadith, the Messenger it's not related that the Messenger وسلم, parted his fingers slightly. The caretaker of an orphan, right? The Messenger وسلم, said, He and I are this close in paradise, but he parted his fingers slightly. Here, it is not mentioned that he parted it. He and I are this close in paradise. SubhanAllah. You see the status of a sister? Are you taking good care of your sisters? What are you going to do now when you go back? Not only when she is alive, even after her death. We usually mention the rights of parents after their death. But we neglect to mention the rights of the rest of the relatives after their death. And here today we'll speak about the sister. And we have one beautiful hadith from the Messenger وسلم, to support that. The sister usually is proud of her family, and especially her brothers. And she would like to be proud of them in front of her husband and in front of her kids and children. And this is an important element that you should fulfill as a brother. 
even after her death, we say that right remains. Usually, the sons of daughters are not considered as part of the immediate family or of the immediate tribe or group. And this is a common mistake that was in existence many where and is still practiced somewhere. And this is wrong in Islam. This is wrong in Islam. She is considered part of the direct family. So your nephew from your sisters are your direct. They are like your brothers, like your own sons. They are like your own sons. The Messenger وسلم, once gathered Al-Ansar. Anas bin Malik عنه, is relating this hadith. He said he gathered Al-Ansar, the people of Medina. Then he asked them, is there anyone with you now who is not among you, who is not one of the Al-Ansar, not one of the tribes? He's asking them, is there any foreign men among you now, any foreign person? So they say, none except, except one, the son of our sister. So there is a sister from Al-Ansar, and she had a son from another tribe. Her father, his father, her husband is from another tribe. So they say, none of us is a foreign here. We are all Al-Ansar, except for one person who is the son of one of our sisters. The Messenger وسلم, said one beautiful hadith to remove these differences. The Messenger وسلم, said, the son of the daughter of people is one of them. He is like your sons, directly. He's not a foreign person. So he is one of you. And this is a beautiful hadith to set this matter straight and clarify these points to uh, the Muslims. So those are some of the glimpses that we uh, wanted to mention. And we'll conclude with one important aspect, which is after the marriage of a sister. And sometimes after being divorced as well. You need to be her supporter and her protector all the time, despite whatever happens. So she should realize and her husband should realize that she has a family and she has brothers who are ready to protect her, to take care of her, to uh, honor her and to keep her with them if the needs is there. Ma'aqil bin Yasar radiallahu anhu arda. He had a, a sister and that sister, he was her guardian. So her cousin came and asked for her hand in marriage and he gave him and she married him. Later on, he divorced her one single divorce. So this divorce, she can't take her back at any time during the Idda period. But he didn't take her back until the Idda was over. The Idda was over and he did not take her back. So they are separated. The marriage is over now between them. People came asking for her hand in marriage. And among them came the previous cousin, the ex-husband, came asking for her hand in marriage. Ma'aqil bin Yasar was angry. He said, by Allah Almighty, I will never let her marry. She will live with me honored and protected. I'm not going to make her be humiliated in the same way. Or being divorced again, you take her and then you divorce her. So I'm not going to give her hand in marriage. I'm not going to agree to that marriage. Now he is doing it to protect his sister. However, she was willing to return back to her husband and the husband now willing to take her back and take good care of her, the ex-husband. So here in Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed one verse in the Holy Quran. It is not allowed for the guardian to prevent anyone under his guardianship from marriage if she is willing to. If they are willing, if they have made up whatever problem that they had before, and now they are ready to be together, it is not allowed, neither for the father or the brother or any guardian, to prevent them from that. This was revealed in the story of Ma'aqil bin Yasar So we are speaking about taking good care of them and protecting them and let them that they know there is a supporter. So she, is, she does not feel humiliated or in need of the husband in case the husband, God forbid, was not good with her or he's mistreating her. Don't worry, we are here. But if she is willing to remain with him or to live with him or to give him another chance, there is absolutely no harm in Islam as well. And now again, we see this problem as well. Sometimes some of the parents or the guardians prevent their divorced daughters or divorced sisters from marrying again or from marrying the ex-husband. This is not allowed. If she is willing to, and they are better now. They made up for that. It is not allowed to prevent them from that. 
Another problem that we are seeing is some, some people preventing their daughters or their sisters from marrying all together in fear that part of the inheritance will go to foreign people. <coughs> what is this mentality? Where is this coming from? This is foreign to Islam, foreign even to any, any regular or honest customs or behavior. This is inhuman and inhumane. We should be very careful about this. If the limit in Islam, how do you know who is going to live and who is going to die? And this is the risk from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is her right, whether she is married or not, whether she is divorcee or not, whether she is widowed or not, whether she is young or old, it does not change. Her right, her share in inheritance, that is her part. This is a right from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not from you. You are not allowed to take any part of that, not a single dirham from that. This is her right and she deserves the full inheritance no matter what. So those are some of the glimpses about the rights and the status of sisters in Islam. We need to ask ourselves, are we taking good care of our sisters? Are we there for them? Are we being good guardians to them? Good brothers with them? Can they depend on you during their times of difficulties, their times of needs? Can they depend upon you that you will honor and protect and educate their kids and their husbands after their death? That is part of your duty in Islam. And we need to highlight these elements also uh, as well. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, forgive us and forgives all our sisters. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them and, them and us the bless inshallah in this world and the hereafter. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gather us all in the hereafter in Al-Fardus Al-A'la with the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the rest of the prophets and messengers and righteous people. Ameen wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam taslim kathira.